My name is Dr. Kate Regal Van West. I'm a scientist, an artist, and a circus performer with a passion for how play can improve well-being. I also happen to have a PhD on the effects of poi on physical and cognitive function. Yes, you can get a PhD in a ball on a cord. I'm here today to talk to you about poi. What the heck is it? Where did it come from? What do you do with it? Let's find out. When you hear poi, you might think of the traditional Polynesian food or the Tibetan name for Tibet, maybe a person of interest. But it's also this object, a ball on a cord, and what you do with that object, which is spin it in circles. Today, there are lots of different styles of poi being practiced all over the world as a form of play and performance. So how did poi get so popular? In order to answer that, we need to go back to the beginning of time. Humans and other creatures have been playing with objects since like forever. Just check out this Egyptian wall painting that depicts toss juggling from 2000 BCE. And there's lots of records of games with a ball and a cord, including some from Western Polynesia, which is particularly interesting as the first records of poi, as we know it today, come from New Zealand. The first record was in 1815 by traveler John Nicholas. He said, The ladies amuse themselves by throwing it backwards and forwards. It is somewhat larger than a cricket ball, having a long string appended to it, which they seize with the forefinger while the ball is in motion and are very dexterous in this practice. Unfortunately, this statement and most of the other statements made by early explorers are pretty all over the place in terms of everything. Was poi a game or a dance? Was it practiced by men or women? Was it done sitting or standing? Was it accompanied by singing or chanting? People do generally believe that poi was originally practiced by men to train strength and dexterity, but based on these early accounts, we're really not sure. Also, all the early accounts were made by middle to upper class white dudes whose chauvinism undoubtedly influenced their observations, so. In the 1860s, we get a bit more information as poi played a prominent role as a spiritual messenger. At a time when Europeans were coming in and stealing land and everything up, two Maori leaders combined poi with chants about religion and politics and used poi as a real symbol of peace. Some of the poi styles and movements that we see today in Kapahaka came from this time, and poi really became a national phenomenon in the early 20th century with the rise of tourism. This is the first time we see poi performed publicly on a large scale, like when famous royal people were visiting, and we also see an evolution in the movements to keep up with the curious tourists who wanted to see a good show and see a piece of Maori culture. In terms of what the poi actually looked like, most early accounts agree that the ball was made of raupo and the cord was made of harakiki. There's also some decorative poi for special occasions, made out of the same base materials that are pretty amazing. Of course, when the Europeans came, the poi making process changed because they brought all sorts of more durable materials like newspaper and plastic and wool and pig's bladder. The poi used today in Kapahaka use pretty much the same materials, minus the pig's bladder. So, how did poi go from this to this? No one really knows. We're not even sure that the types of poi seen today, like fire poi and glow poi, come from Maori poi. I mean, people use the word poi to describe them, which is a Maori word, but they might have just popped up independently. Either way, people all over the world are enjoying poi today as a form of play and performance and a way to keep the mind and body fit. And of course, poi continues to play a prominent role in Maori culture. You can see dazzling displays in Kapahaka, and poi persists as a true tonga and storyteller as it has for hundreds of years. If you want to learn more about the history of poi, or just get in touch, check out the links in the description, visit spinpoi.com, or find me on social media. I'd love to hear from you.